I'm more concerned about China than Europe. Europe has been in a pretty much stagnation for the last few quarters. The same thing with the United Kingdom. But think of it, given the shock that came from Russia, Ukraine, there could have been a real hard landing instead of had flat economic activity for the last four or five quarters. The other problem with Europe, of course, is aging, lack of technological innovation and things that are more structural. China, I think, is a more serious story because Chinese potential growth used to be for three decades 10 percent, then went to five. I would say most people now estimate the potential growth for China for the rest of the decade is going to be between two to three percent. It's a story not just of aging, it's a story of state capitalism, it's a story of less FDI to China because of geopolitical stuff, a story of less export-led growth because there is protectionism all over the world. Uh, consumer and business sentiment is in a funk, in part because of the policies of uh, Xi Jinping. And finally, consumption is low as a share of GDP and savings are high because you don't have a social safety net. People have to save for old age, for retirement, if they get sick, if they get unemployed, the migrant workers don't have access to public services. So there are really structural reasons why growth in China is going to be 2-3%. And that's a real shift for the global economy. Is that a disinflationary shock or an inflationary shock for China to be growing uh, at a much slower pace? Uh, it's disinflationary for China, and we already see it in the data, but it's also disinflationary for the world in two ways. Uh, first way is that essentially China is dumping on global market all this excess capacity. And of course, the Chinese currency weakening means that other currencies are appreciating, and that's also deflationary. And finally, if China is growing less, demand for commodities, everything else equally will be lower, and part of the global inflation for the last few years has been commodity. So overall, a slowing down China is deflationary for the global economy. Does that economic malaise risk a more assertive foreign policy coming out of the CCP? Is that what you'd expect? Uh, I'm not sure because um, they had a very aggressive foreign policy, but I think they realize right now this, this kind of a wolf warrior policy doesn't make them friend in Europe or around the world. Uh, they have to worry about economic growth. The National People Congress is right now. They're very insecure. And their reaction to the Taiwanese election has been actually relatively moderate. They could have been much more aggressive. And I think they realize in a situation like this one, escalating tensions with the U.S. is not good for them, is not good for relations with Europe. And they're taking a slightly more cautious approach. I think they really started to worry about the economy, about the stock market. And probably, you know, after the Xi Jinping and Biden meeting last fall, there's been a beginning of something of a thaw. I don't think it's a strategic change. There will be continued strategic competition between U.S. and China. The Cold War is going to be like this. But probably for the next uh, 12 to 24 months, the relationship are not going to escalate in the negative direction because they're worried about the economy. You mentioned the NPC. Can we see any more stimulus coming out of the Chinese government? Uh, some people have suggested that they should. They should have much more monetary and fiscal stimulus. Um, Xi Jinping and most of the policymakers are resisting it, in part because there is already too much debt and deficits, and doubling down on credit fuel, fixed investment is going to be dangerous. But I think that even Chinese realize that the slowdown of growth is structural, is not cyclical. And if you do more monetary and fiscal stimulus, you increase debt, you have a short-term boost to growth, but it's only short-term, and you're creating more debt and leverage and more financial risk down the line. So there will be some stimulus, because without that stimulus, their target of 5% for this year is not going to be achieved. I think potential growth already in China right now is less than 4%, but I see growth this year being closer to 4 rather than 5. There will be some stimulus because without it, growth becomes on a three-handle. That something is politically not acceptable, but not as much stimulus to get you 5%, so something in between.